Today's topic will be uh, about building a healthy house or whatever you want to name it, biohacker's dream house. Uh, we have talked about many, many aspects that more often than that, modern lifestyle might have some kind of negative impacts on our health. We have discussed many times what are those impacts, how we can mitigate it, and so on and so forth. But it would be interesting to figure out like what can be done in a scenario where you are just starting to build your house and yep. it's something that uh, can be laid out as, as, a, as a cornerstone for that house to be as less harmful as possible because we know in a lot of places like I, i'll go with my electromagnetic field uh, readers and whatnot i'll go in bedrooms and living rooms and whatnot and, and a lot of those places will, will will not suffice the safety so to speak uh parameters so you want to op open up like foundational health concepts of the house what would you look for uh to set up to begin with, you know, you're doing yeah. home and maybe maybe go through the step by step process. What your what your maybe location, maybe materials you're using, what kind of tests you're doing to your place that you are setting up your house before you ever can kick off. Yeah, yeah. So so foundationally, it is location, right? So you can't you you can if you ha if you have enough money and you're willing to stay inside all the time and you build the house in a certain way. You can kind of retrofit a house and you can kind of do it almost anywhere, I want to say. But doing it in a very highly populated area will pose very unique problems that are harder to solve, right? So number one, you want to make it easier on yourself as much as you can do, which means the location is probably the most foundational point is you want to definitely have a meter i would say an rf meter for sure and a body voltage meter and when you're checking out lots checking out a a, a, a location where you're going to build a house or something along those lines um that is uh something that you want to do <clears throat> to uh to uh make sure and select a location that already has a low rf footprint and low electromagnetic field footprint right so that is step number one that is the foundational step now if it's a little bit off right like uh you know in these meters and and whenever you do any any kind of actual um training with the meters uh you know if you, if you could even hire a building biologist to do this for you if you didn't want anything to do which me and yours do have familiarity with uh but if you wanted to hire somebody to check out a lot or a potential building site you can totally hire somebody but nonetheless you can also do this yourself and on the meters themselves there they, they come with some instructions and information of like the levels that you're looking for and if it was in the mild range I would probably still classify that as an acceptable place because you can then turn around and do some of the things that I'm going to describe to the house uh, to actually mitigate quite a bit of that that's coming from the environment, right? So the purpose of testing the location is to test the environment absent what you're going to do, all right, absent the house. Um, so once that once you find a place, right, the next set of foundational things has to do with foundational health, which is what we our whole channel is based off of, right? How does the body actually work, right? So one of those key concepts is uh, making sure that you get plenty of sunlight and sun stimulation at certain times of the day. One of the main important ones is the morning time, and the second most important time is, I would say, the middle of the day for for other health markers and uh, vitality type stuff, right? So think of like the morning time more of um uh the 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 time of day where your body's going to kick off all its activity uh hormones and processes to have a very productive day and then the middle of the day is actually kind of a a pseudo factory time frame of when you're going to create vitality through sex hormones and other neurotransmitters and then nighttime the absence of light is what's going to hit the reset button so that you recover that evening Right. So just so kind of based on what it. you just said, would you would it be smart to design a house where you have a porch in case it rains, where you can go outside and sit there in open air for breakfast coffee? Yep. Yep. So what? So the the next now that you've you know selected an area 
vetted it with some action, not just by looking, right? Like most people will say, well, I looked around and there was no cell phone towers and, you know, power lines were, I'm like, that's not enough. You, you have to have a meter because you can't actually tell from visual, right? So you've checked it out with the meters and uh, you've selected a good location. The next part of that is exactly what you described. The design and position of the building is going to be the next crucial step. Having a area that you can easily access uh, that's not a hassle, uh, that you can easily access that points east. If it's covered, that's fantastic because then you don't really have an excuse of whether it's raining or snowing. Uh, and uh, you could even go as far as doing some things that I'm going to be doing, which is having a heated patio cement, right? So you can literally walk outside. There will never be any any cold feet there uh, unless you choose to, to walk out a little bit further into the cold but essentially it's temperature controlled but still outside in the open air and it's it's covered right so that is a crucial uh, must have uh, in my personal opinion uh, in terms of if you're going to set up your home to be very easy to be healthy in right now the next step of that right because nobody now depending on where you live right if you live in a in a good climate then that can actually be kind of the center focus of where you're going to work from where you're going to uh do some workouts you can kind of start to design an outside space right now in my particular location i can't really do that because i do have six months out of the year where it is winter right doesn't mean i don't have that but that also means that now that means I'm going to spend maybe 30 minutes, an hour outside in that environment. Most of the rest of the time, it's going to be inside, right? Now, <clears throat> you guys have seen videos and stuff where I have red light therapy box going in the background along with a UV light to supplement that. I would integrate that. I would integrate that into my office space. And I would take that a step further, which is another technology and advancement that uh, a lot of people know about. They just don't know the, intri the, the detail that I'm going to explain. And that's skylights and sun tubes. These are ports in your uh, roof that will let sun into your home. The problem is they're all designed to be high efficiency, meaning they block out, just like every other window on the market, they block out UV light at 100% rate and they block out infrared at about 60% rate. <clears throat> the workaround to that is you go with a company that makes skylights or makes sun tubes that allows you to remove or replace the glass. And what you do is you replace it with quartz. Quartz is a type of glass uh, that lets 100% light through, all UV, all infrared. When you are behind a glass window, you get zero UV and 60 to 70% of the infrared is gone. So essentially, it's fake light at that point. It's just blue light. You might as well be standing in front of an LED. But if you go with a corks window, now when you stand in front of that window, you are effectively getting sunlight. You could get a tan behind glass inside your own house. So that is the upgrade. And again, it's not super expensive. It's just you just have to have, know that detail. Hey, I'm going to install some skylights. I'm going to install, install some sun, sun tubes strategically in certain places. For, for me, it's going to be in my office. I'm going to have a red light box already integrated in the office into a light switch along with some UV light, but I'm also going to have a sun tube that literally lights the whole office up, an 18-inch sun tube, where sun is literally going into the office because on the other end of the sun tube, it's going to be a corks glass plane, which will allow all sunlight to go through. Um, and there are companies out there that sell those. Uh, that They don't personally make the glass already in the sun tube so you just need to work with the manufacturer of the sun tube or skylight to make sure that the glass is replaceable and then you just custom order the 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 quartz glass <clears throat> and that is a big hack that's a huge huge hack for anybody that has to be indoors right um because I then think, uh, you many look... people understand that that uh, the windows that we have now take away pretty much all the benefit from the sun yeah, almost 100%. Yeah, it takes 100% of the UV. So so immediately, that means no vitamin D, no more immune system up, up, upgrade, right? You're not modulating your immune system anymore. You're not making vitamin D anymore. And if you're not making vitamin D, look back to your vitamin D discussion, you're also going to have high, high cholesterol, and you're also going to have poor sex hormone function. So if you fix the UV issue, you start to fix those, especially if you spend a lot of time indoors, right? So the skylight, the special glass skylight or special glass sun tube is a major 
hack for any home, especially if you position the home correctly, because in the winter, if you live somewhere where there's four seasons, you can position a, a whole roof line that's facing south so that you get all of the sun all day long whenever the sun is up uh, in the winter. Even when there's clouds, there's still gonna be infrared light and you want that to go into your home. The beauty about sun tubes is you can put all the sun tubes, the entrance to the sun tubes with the special glass all on a south facing uh, roof. And then once they go into the attic, they can turn and move. They're kind of pliable. And then you can move the light so that it exits in any room that you want uh, you. in the home. Wow. Yeah. So that's what I'm using. I'm, that's why I, I'm only using two skylights, but I'm actually using four sun tubes so that the sun tubes I can actually, I'm going to turn one and kind of uh, move it over to to sit in the, on the north side of the house in the kitchen and in my office, even so they're the furthest away from where the sun's going to be in the winter. But because the sun tube is flexible, it allows me to carry sunlight to basically anywhere in the house. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the next big hack has to come with design of materials right so then so that right there that concept is the concept of bringing uh light sunlight into the home as passive and as efficient as possible uh without compromising the feel of your home right if you put a skylight in that's not really that's most people actually really like that uh a sun tube's even uh more it, it, it takes almost less away from the house because it almost looks like a big light. It almost looks like a big LED light when, when you have it in, in, a, in a ceiling. So it actually did, uh, kind of adds to, to the feel of the home. The next big thing would be materials, right? If you happen, right, so this goes back to the location. If you happen to pretest your location and it's mildly, it's acceptable, right? It's not necessarily green, right? It's not green as zero EMF or zero uh, uh, RF, but it's very low and it's barely in the mild range. If it is like that, then the building material on the outside of your home becomes pretty important. Metal, outside uh, metal siding, metal roof, will make it so that any external electromagnetic field can now not penetrate into the house. Mm -hmm. um, it will only be able to penetrate through the, the corks glass and stuff like that, but those are small openings, right? And, um, and it actually gets deflected a lot from by metal. So that would dramatically reduce from if there's a mild elevation in electromagnetic fields or RF, when you start building the home, inside of the home, it will be basically zero if you build it with the right material materials on the outside. Um, that's, that's a very easy material swap because there's more and more innovation in the metal siding and metal roof feel because they don't all have to look the same. They can actually look like shingles and still be metal. They can look like regular normal rocks for your siding and there's still gonna be a metal metal siding. So lots of options with that. That's a very low, low hanging, not super expensive to kind of just change that material. Now, if you happen to test your, now this is where it can get more complicated. Say you're doing this in a city and the location that you start with is I wouldn't say red. I would never build anything in the red, right? Uh, as far as like in, in in electromagnetic field testing, um, but let's say it's at the higher end of mild. Then at that point, I would upgrade your sheetrock inside the home to be lead lined. See, people don't understand that we already know how to build a building that combats electromagnetic fields because we have imaging centers, right? MRI, X-ray. Uh, uh, ultrasound, all of these are electro other forms of electromagnetic fields. And we have whole centers, whole buildings dedicated to imaging, right? And the people that work there would be exposed to a lot of freaking radiation if they didn't build the building in a certain way. So we already know how to build a building that protects you from EMFs. And the, one of the biggest ones is kind of a little bit of a conspiracy, but you know, it's kind of the truth. So I don't really call it a conspiracy. Uh, and that is this, lead. Lead-lined drywall is the standard for imaging centers. What did they have in paint that everybody used to paint their home all the time? Lead. Lead-lined paint is also something that you can use. You can't buy that anymore. I don't know why they would take lead out of it if the only way that it hurts you is if you eat it. Why not teach people not to eat the paint and use the paint that still protects you from electromagnetic fields, right? I'm like, mm, you know, there's something there to that, especially when you turn around and you make a whole industry of, hey, we're going to line your drywall with lead. Don't eat the drywall. I'm like, isn't that the same concept? <laughs> it, it really is, right? So, but either way, you, you would want to upgrade with a metal siding and inside a lead line drywall to make sure that 
the higher amount of electromagnetic fields on the outside of your house does not penetrate that drywall. It will make it zero, right? Now, the next concept here is in um, uh, following along with materials is bringing, so so we did two things there, right, With so far in the discussion. We brought sunlight in and we kept electromagnetic fields out or if progress, right, because there's always going to be progress. I don't expect my, my location to always be 100% clean 10 years from now, right? I expect population to grow and I expect some level of technology to grow along with it, right? So I'm future-proofing my house by building it with these materials on the outside. When electromagnetic fields arrive, I don't have to move I can, my house is mitigating that for me. The second thing you want to do is you want to bring the ground into the house, meaning you want to be able to walk around in your house barefoot and be grounded, right? Because when you're grounded and you have sunlight coming into you, now you upregulate the electron transport chain of the mitochondria without food. We've talked about this several times, especially in our calorie video, and that goes a long, long way. It reduces inflammation. We have lots of studies that show grounding reduces inflammation as long as electromagnetic fields aren't interacting with you, which is why I said these in the steps that I set them. First, bring the sunlight in. Next, eliminate possibilities of electromagnetic fields. And thirdly, make sure that you design the home in a way that allows you to ground it effectively. Now, my simple solution to that is you build a, a one-level home with no basement or crawl space. So it's just a, a cement pad. Cement and rebar will conduct electricity or ground you very effectively. Now, at the same time, I also want your home to be efficient, right? I want it to be, uh, I don't want it to cost you an arm and a leg to heat and cool it. Um, and so you're gonna use some level of insulation, quite a bit of insulation, actually. Um, that's kind of the standard to even meet requirements these days for for net zero home home building and stuff like that. Um, so anywhere where, so for example, if you're gonna use a cement pad, you're gonna have to insulate that pad. <clears throat> And the, the codes say that, oh, you only need like a certain amount of grounding rod for your pad and your electrical system. You will find that the more insulation that you use, whether that's in under the pad or in your walls and in the roof, the more static electricity, the more electrical current gets held in that home environment. That electricity is an electromagnetic field because it is induced by all the wiring and all the electronics that are going to be in your home. Those are going to be displaced onto you. You're going to pick those up. You want to be able to be grounded. So you, so that's where meters come in big time, right? A body voltage meter as you go through the build processes. So in my case, um, uh, as I was about to pour the foundation, there was the insulation. I was standing in the insulation and I could tell, hey, I'm building up a little bit of static and whenever I grab any piece of rebar, I'd get a little bit of a shock. So I got my body voltage meter out and I could tell I had five volts that would build up on me. Mm -hmm. So then I pounded a ground rod in, it reduced it down to about three and a half volts. I pounded another one in, reduced it down to two volts. I ended up having to pound six ground rods into mine, which is twice as many, or actually three times as many as what's required by code, but because of all the extra insulation, that's what was required to be able to dissipate all that electrical charge. And then my body voltage meter read zero. So that allowed me to then go, okay, now I'll pour my concrete. Now my concrete's poured, go out there with my body voltage meter, standing barefoot on my concrete, zero voltage, right? Zero voltage on my body. So, so now- You are here for being able to do that from the scratch. Is there something that people can do about their house once they've already have built it and they have- <clears throat> Yes. So if your home has a, um, a solid floor foundation, it's pretty easy, right? Um, because any tile or anything, which is why I built my house my way, it has a solid concrete floor. Anything that touches that concrete will now be grounded. So um, if you are refitting, right, you move into a house or anything like that, the first thing you need to find out is do you have a solid floor uh foundation right a solid floor if you don't and that's going to be actually kind of common it's not going to be that way it's usually going to be some kind of wood or rafters or floating subfloor and in that case what you want to do is you want to ground any tile right so that's easy to do that's easy to do because you go you, easy to do meaning you can hire somebody to do this uh, like an electrician to find your ground wire, right? Because there is codes that require you to be, to have ground wires for your electrical system. You need to find that wire and then you need to bond it 
to your tile, bond it to your tile and the grout that you're laying down in your tile, because that tile is the thing that's going to be making contact with you and the subfloor isn't cement, it's probably wood, so wood's not conductive. So you want to take the wire out, of, uh, out, bond it to that wire, and then that wire goes inside your, your grout, underneath the tile. It goes in, in your grout. And then when you bond it like that, all of the tile that's touching itself is now grounded. So and almost, that will allow you... Almost allows you to build a mental, emotional well-being room. Yeah, you could totally do that. You could totally do that. Um, you can do, uh, you know, a tile floor. Tile is conductive. The grout in there is going to be conductive. Um, you could do, you know, a, a false cement floor. I've seen people do that. They like the cement feel and look, you know, and especially when you epoxy it and polish it and make it look all shiny. Um, uh, you could do that, right, and you could ground that. Um, other things would be... Uh, you minimize carpet, like living rooms and things of that nature. You you would you would you know I I still am going to have carpet in my in my in my bedrooms and stuff like that. And, and in those rooms, uh, the biggest thing is you want to make sure that you map out the wiring. Again, this goes with just talking to your builder, talking to your electrician, or this is the hard part to do in terms of. Uh, I'm, I'm actually working on a hack for our for our school group um, for retrofitting this because so so uh, this concept right here is you've eliminated electromagnetic fields from the outside things that can go into your home but now you're going to start bringing electromagnetic fields into your home because of electricity you're going to bring your you know all your electricity and all your appliances and all of that and then then you have technologies like Wi-Fi and things of that nature so. The easiest thing to do, especially with automation, automatic lights, sensors, all of that type of stuff, alarm systems, you do not want to use Wi-Fi. You want to hardwire things, right? You want to use Cat5 cable for your computers, for your setups. You want to have workstations. Everybody sets up a workstation, right? I don't know why. I, ha I know very few people that get quality work done with the laptop on their lap, right? Like everybody sits down with a workstation, right? Like, like that. so... If you already are going to sit down consistently in a place that's a workstation, you might as well hardwire your laptop so that you don't have to use Wi-Fi. And that goes a long, long way, especially when you're inside. Um, so the less wireless communication devices that you have indoors, the better it's going to be. You're going to have less brain, brain fog. You're going to have less irritability. And you're probably going to sleep better, right? So... I still am going to have a Wi-Fi router, but I'm going to buy one that allows me to remote control the Wi-Fi itself. I can turn the Wi-Fi on and off with just the push of a button. And the router still is hardwired to my three or four different workstations that will be in the home because we homeschool. So we have a school room that will be a laptop there that's hooked up permanently. Um, and same thing for my office. That is um, a little bit harder to retrofit to a home. If you own the home, not so bad. If you don't own the home, like you, an apartment building, you're, you're kind of out of luck there. You're not going to be able to modify the, the stuff. But if you own your home, it's really not that difficult because you can, uh, again, hire uh, you know, anybody that sets up TVs or, or, or uh, um, entertainment systems and stuff like that. They're really good at this, right? They're, they're really good at finding your modem and be like, okay, would you want hardwired or you want wires, right? If you, if you ask them, hey, I want everything hardwired, they'll fish the wiring through the walls and they'll 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 get their meters out and make sure that they're doing it all correctly and they'll put it wherever you want right i'm building my home so i'm already going to do it right from the very start but that's a big hack it's a big hack don't sleep on that then How the next thing is in, uh, in california who are using like starlink and things like that uh i actually don't mind that because you can hook up the starlink satellite receiver somewhere off your property or at the edge of your property and hardwire it into a modem that's okay. actually a really good hack Yep. So you 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 have the receiver, the thing that's actually going to receive the satellite signal, not on your home. You have it, you know, outside your home somewhere, you know, at least 20, 30 feet away from your home, if, if possible. And then you literally hardwire that into a modem and that would be the solution. Or again, if you built your home correctly, you have a metal roof, you could put your Starlink satellite on the roof. The roof will reflect that back out and not go into your home. And then you hardwire from the satellite receiver down into a modem. And then that modem hardwire it to all your stuff. So, yeah, that's that's actually a really good hack um, if you're out in a remote area. Um, and then the, the next step in there is what I mentioned. 
electricity coming into the house is going to bring its own electromagnetic field. Now, the good thing about that is that electromagnetic field is very easy to measure, right? The the pen, right, that you that you have that will that will immediately tell you that that wire is hot. That's the electromagnetic field. When you get the pen close enough, it lights up even if you're not touching the the wire, um, and for the most part, that's around two or three feet, right? Two or three feet is possible to pick it up. And uh, so if you run the wires in your walls, you won't want to run them not next to your head, right? In your bedroom, make sure that the wires go counterclockwise from where your bed's head is, right? So that it never actually comes around by your head and goes around. The next hack, which is what I'm working on with this, is you can upgrade the wiring to have a metal sheeting on it, right? So if you're building a new home, uh, the metal sheeting is grounded. So that acts just like the metal roof on your house. The electromagnetic field that's leaving the wire touches the metal sheeting, the metal sheeting is grounded, and the electromagnetic field dissipates right to the ground. And that means that there is, you can't even pick it up with a, with a, with a pen. You can't even get close enough. You can touch the metal and you're still not gonna pick up the electromagnetic field. The difference there is it is costly and it can only be done in the building stage, right? Because you're not going to be able to rip all the old wires out and run new wires in when the house is already built, right? So that's the only caveat to that. Now, there's a workaround here, right? I mentioned that anything metal can dissipate in an electromagnetic field. So I'm actually probably going to do it this way just for cost and efficiency. I don't, uh, the, the metal clad wiring uh, is, uh, I know how to run it, and I know that that's the right way to do it, but I'm going to, again, do some testing because I have my meters. I'm actually going to do the following. Because I live somewhere where there is four seasons, I'm actually going to have a aluminum reflective layer between the drywall and, uh, and the studs. So the wires are running in the studs, and the, I'm literally going to sheet with an aluminum sheeting all of my wall. And then I'm going to bond my ground yep, from top to bottom. From, from top to bottom and into the roof. I'm, the whole inside of the house, behind the drywall, will be sheeted with aluminum. That will do two things. Because I live in somewhere where there's four seasons, anything reflective, and this is a new concept, this is, this is actually a new building concept, insulation is usually rated by how many inches of, of air space it can, it can hold, and that doesn't, air doesn't let air, uh, heat transfer or heat leave very much. But there's another concept, re reflectivity. And we've vaguely talked about this a little bit with like mirrors and, and windows. That's actually how windows become so efficient at blocking UV and reflecting IR light is they have a reflective material on the outside. So you can use that to your advantage in a, somewhere where there's four seasons. You put an aluminum reflective material on the inside of your home and that keeps heat in. And if the, the reflective material is double-sided, any heat coming from the outside in the summertime gets reflected back. Mm. So it works for hyper insulating the home and coincidentally, it's also conductive. So if you bond that to a ground, now that whole wall, you can run normal wires through it, or if your home already has normal wires through it, you can remove the drywall. That's actually a lot easier to do than you think and place the aluminum sheeting, put the drywall back up, the, the sheeting is grounded, the electromagnetic field will hit the, the aluminum and be grounded immediately. So now all of your walls are protecting you from your own wiring. Mm. That's interesting. Right? Yeah, interesting. so that, yeah, yeah that, and that's actually the, I, I'm pretty confident it's gonna work. I'm gonna test it, I'm gonna do some videos on it. And that's actually probably the route that I'm gonna go with my home because I do live somewhere where there's four seasons. So anything that benefits uh, keeping heat in and keeping heat out is going to be beneficial. And th in this particular case, I'll just use a special material instead of normal insulation. I'll use a reflective aluminum insulation to also dissipate the electromagnetic fields at the same time. So it's kind of a two for one deal. So what about uh, more advanced, well, let's say just different area of health and well-being is your water and things like that, because we have talked about fluoride and all those kind of things. What can be done when people setting up their house to make sure that drinking water they are getting out of the tap is the highest quality and best for their health? Yes. So what I would say is the, the best thing to do is, number one, this also goes almost back to the first step of 
electromagnetic field at the location. You also want to check the municipality, right? Check the municipality that you're going to be building in. Do they fluorinate their water? If they fluorinate their water, this is where in the building process, it wouldn't be a no-go for me. It would just be in the building process, I would have an RO system installed, an actual out-of-the-box RO system for your water coming in right off the bat. Um, I would just budget for that because you're going you to need to for eliminate all the house or just for kitchen? <laughs> No, nope, I would do it for the whole house. I would do it for the whole house. It it, it, it it turns out cheaper if you design a nice big RO system. It costs you a little bit more up front, but they're easier to maintain, right? Instead of the really small ones for the kitchen where you're going to have to buy filters all the time. The RO, the bigger systems, they're easier to maintain. They have better technology, and it's going to cover your whole house. Um, that way you don't have to worry about specifically only drinking water out of a certain area in your home. Um, I would do it for your whole house. If you find out that your municipality does treat it with fluoride. Now, hopefully you you don't have that problem. If you don't have that problem, then the next thing that I would say is you definitely want a filtering system to filter out chloride and, and any other heavy metals that are probably not getting tested for and things of that nature. And so I would just invest in a normal filtering system anywhere uh, at, at any sink or definitely going into your, your ice maker and your, uh, your uh, fridge. Um, those would be... Uh, no brainers, but most appliances already come with that filtering type system, and you can uh, add those filtering systems at the point, like under a sink and stuff like that. But if you're going to try to filter fluoride, you need a full on RO system, and I would put it at the right where it enters your house, so that way it has a dedicated space and it's a system that's big enough to handle your whole house. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing that I would say in terms of water is, um. Air, uh, air purifiers, right? Like you definitely want a system that has a, uh, a, a way to pull air out of your house and suck in air from the outside into your house and filter at the at the same time. A lot of people have like a normal HVAC system and it doesn't really do that. All it does is recirculate air inside your house. You want a called an EGR system, that's in America, and it's just an efficiency uh, ventilator. And what that does is exactly that. It takes all the vents in your home, so think of the vents in your bathroom, the vents in your kitchen, and pulls that air out and puts it outside and then pulls air in from the outside and filters it as it comes back in your home. The reason why you want to do that is because materials in your home are always off-gassing. Carpet's off-gassing, insulation is off-gassing, uh, paint is off-gassing. Uh, there's a lot of materials that go into your home that are always going to be off-gassing, probably for at least five or ten years. And you want to consistently get rid of that, right? Um, that's, a, that's a big deal. So you would want to upgrade your system from a normal HVAC system to something that, re, that, that, that doesn't just recirculate, but actually eliminates and then brings fresh air in that's felt. Um, again, that is something that can actually be retrofitted fairly easily um, because all you need to do is upgrade an HVAC system to be a recirculating system. There might need to be a duct that gets added to, to bring air from the outside, but that isn't that difficult. Most places have their HVAC system in a location that can be retrofitted fairly easy, um, but obviously it would be easier at the building stage. Um, what about like practical yeah. layout of the house? Where would you put the kitchen or working space, garage? Is there anything that you particularly look like or are the current designs are already kind of optimal for everything to? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so other than facing certain windows that you know you're going to spend. So, number one. Try to figure out the, uh, the the amount of time that you're going to spend in certain areas in the home. And those are the places I would prioritize windows with special glass to allow sunlight in. That's also the, the how I would figure out where the location is, whether it's going to be south-facing, north-facing, or east-facing, or west-facing, right? If it's somewhere you're going to spend a lot of time in, I want it facing east or I want it facing south. And I want special windows in there or a way to get sunlight in there directly. And that's also, if you're going to spend a lot of time in there, that's the place where you're going to want to make sure that you at least put up um, the special wiring or the aluminum hack that I just described in, especially in bedrooms, right? Bedrooms are the biggest one. The bedrooms for sure are the ones that are going to get wrapped in aluminum, uh, top, bottom, all the way around, all the way around, top, bottom, and sides um, to make sure that when I go to bed, I'm not being interacted with by electromagnetic fields. The next little hack, and this can be retrofitted to anybody, is I'm going to upgrade my electrical panel to have a button, a, a remote, that I can turn off 
the electricity to the bedrooms whenever I want, just with a with a remote. That way, if I find that I'm having some kind of an issue and I'm trying to figure out if it's an electromagnetic field problem, I can just push the button and start figuring it out right away, right? Like I can literally turn off the power to this whole bedroom, go in there, do I feel any differences, things of that nature, start sleeping in that particular room and so uh, all those things. That is actually a device that you can purchase online through Live EMF Safe, and that can be retrofitted to any electrical panel. It doesn't have to be at the starting stages. Hmm. Yeah, because that, that brings me to like smart technologies and whatnot, because I've seen a lot of people that I work with that they have every single equipment in their bedroom, and it's usually Bluetooth operated as well. All their chargers, all their phones, uh, watches, iPads, TV. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's that, that's the actually the number one thing you want to make the bedroom the place that gets the darkest and the quietest when it comes to electromagnetic fields. You you want the bedrooms to kind of be a sacred place. They, you want them to essentially be a Faraday cage for light and for electromagnetic fields. If you do that, you've got almost 50 percent of your day covered right most people are going to try to spend eight hours in your bed right okay well if you're going to spend eight hours there that's the place you don't want any of this stuff right 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 yeah but that's uh, probably a story for another day i'm mindful of your <laughs> time, David. Uh, thank you so much as usual and i'll see you next video awesome thank you <laughs>